Alan, a double barrel this week, what have we got? This week we are comparing the very recently released Subaru WRX sedan and wagon. David, these are, this was a bit controversial when it was first launched, especially the sedan with the black bits over the mud guards. Oh, I think that created that image of toughness. You remember the models before were a bit sort of rough and rough in a way, weren't they? They, they, they didn't have an elegance about them, and so they, you always wanted to have that competition grunt look, and particularly with the sedan. Hey, Subaru just told us it was to aid aerodynamics, and to that end, they consider the sedan to be the more sporty, track-focused version, and the wagon, which you notice has not got those mudguard bits, mm. Uh, the more kind of luxurious but still performance car. But also, this car, the wagon, is marketed in other markets as a Lavorg. Yes, I, I never liked the name. No, I thought it was bloody it, stupid. Well, you know, the, the thing that Lavorg backwards is grovel. <laughs> I don't know why you mentioned that for no particular reason. No. These are both the top models, they're both automatic. Now interestingly the sedan has a manual option, the wagon doesn't, but the sedan manual is only in the lower models, not in this TS version. And it uses more fuel. It uses more fuel. The other thing is of course the top version, so both of these TS's, in the drive modes when you select Sport Plus you can change the suspension as well. So it's got very clever suspension. The other models just have uh, fixed dampers. Well not fixed dampers because that would make the ride Rather rough. Very rough. The main differences, there's a few differences in dimensions, David. Oh, yeah, marginally. The wagon's a bit longer, but has a slightly shorter wheelbase, five millimetres five or Five millimetres so. shorter in the wheelbase and longer overall. Yeah, uh, it's packaging it more as a usable space inside vehicle. Along with all the other similarities, because after all, this is just a wagon version of the sedan, They've both got the same engine, the same symmetrical all-wheel drive system, mm. same power output. Yes, 202 kilowatts and 350 newton metres. Not huge in that sense. And, of course, there's no extra power STI. No, but you can get STI trim if yeah, you yeah. want the look. Now, you notice in the back there is... <laughs> that doesn't open quite as far as I thought. There's a luggage cover, of course. And the good thing that I like about Subarus is that there's a spare tyre in here. So you can go out and about and not have to worry about puncture repair kits. And a nice little boot spoiler, a little lip spoiler on the, on the boot. I think that adds just that touch. You can, I believe, get the STI bigger wing, but uh, it was a oh, sign no. of the, the hoon in some ways. No, way. no, it was a sign of a very small Minded. Outlook, outlook on life. The big issue here is the lack of access space. If you were to look at something like a Stinger, which has a notch back, you could open it right up and feel much more comfortable in using that. Here you're putting things in the back of a shelf, as it were. Now, David, getting in, how was getting in? Pretty good. I didn't have to duck my head too much to get under here, which... Uh, it's not bad. I have more knee room. Uh, and foot room. A little bit cramped, obviously, electric seats. Yep. Uh, they're both, seats are both set for me so that we can get an accurate idea with the same size person. Uh, over the centre console, we've got outer rear seat heating buttons, a couple of USBs and a vent. No third zone climate control, though? Uh, no. How's your headspace, David? Not good. I'm touching the roof. Oh dear. And the seating? Do you like the seating? Yeah, I, I just think it looks nice. The old Cantera makes it a little bit less slip in a high corner situation. Again, getting in, it's okay. It's Same so old. There's a bit more room there. Yes, I don't that's know what more. I thought. I think they've moved the seats back a little, despite the fact that the wheelbase is shorter. Headroom. Uh, headroom, marginally half an inch better, it seems. Other than that, the Pretty the, good leg uh, room center, here. The centre console uh, seats, same. heating and USBs are exactly the same. Different pattern. It is a slightly different pattern, yeah. But I mean, it's still Alcantara and leather or leather look. 
these cars are as similar as anything can be. Mm. Well, there's slightly different coloured trims and so forth, but basically it, this is the same car. Mm. Nice big new entertainment system, and we'll look at that when we're driving. I've got the CVT in full sports automatic. David's following me. It's toughened up the suspension and when you put it in sport, the CVT acts like a conventional automatic transmission. So I'm not actually sure why they bother putting a CVT in a sports car. I don't really think it belongs here, but anyway, it's whipping through these corners beautifully. One thing we've noticed that this car, the sedan, is a little firmer than the car David's driving. And it even kicks down when it's going into corners, just like you'd expect a normal transmission to do. It brings joy, and a lot of people have said this didn't have quite enough power, that with no STI version available, that this was really a little bit limp. And well, it's not. It handles beautifully. But you don't get a lot of sound from the engine. It's fairly quiet, even in sports mode, which is such a shame. While we're cruising, sound from the sound system is, it's not bad. It's Harman Kardon. It's quite decent for a relatively budget priced car. What I'm going to do now is select comfort. And instantly, the suspension now is nice and soft. And I think that that's the way you'll drive this car most of the time. You'll drive it most of the time in comfort mode. No doubt David is rabbiting on about handling this and turning that. And David likes a David likes a chat. It obviously, doesn't have that immediate lowdown oomph for an electric car. Yet it still has a good surge of power, and like any good performance petrol engine it not only surges it keeps surging now I'm in the driving with the sports plus I came up in just comfort mode and it doesn't absolutely bite the corner but it doesn't resist it 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 goes in firmly and holds firmly without sometimes you get with performance cars where you turn it a little and it's it's almost like you get punched in the side of the face I, I'm, I like it it's it's easy to drive we have a slow person in front of us Alan is showing good restraint The steering's actually very light, although I've got it on Sports Plus, I might well be able to go to individual to make it a little firmer. It has that feel to it of electric steering a little. And again, that's reinforced by that lack of on-off sort of feeling coming into a corner, which encourages you to drive smoothly rather than that sort of macho punchy feeling of turning into a corner and feeling it grip so very very tightly it's not as if it's not gripping it's just the feel of it it's funny because on the launch perhaps there were things like the racetrack where it felt a little bit more cornering on rails but I think I'm enjoying this on a nice smooth twisty country road all right foot flat down nice bit of ex nice bit of acceleration but sadly behind a P plater you can hear that um, CVT changing gears. So remember it is just simulated ratios. A CVT doesn't actually have 
gears as such, but it does have ratios, so the little spindles go in and out. Now I'm on the highway, I'm going to select comfort mode. The ride is instantly very much softer, even softer in the wagon. I'm turning on the cruise control and I'm going to press set. Just going to wind it up. Now with the cruise control, you activate it and if you want to change the speed, you keep a constant press and that'll go up in one increment. If you press one just once, then it'll go up in five kilometers an hour. Now I'm going to turn on the active steering. This I found on the way up to be particularly good. Subaru has all sorts of odd little noises, odd little warning noises, bings and bongs. It warns you when it sees a car in front, which is silly because I mean I can see the car in front. I don't need to have a commentary about it. In short though, whether it's the sedan or the wagon, both are touring cars, both are sporty cars, and both are very comfortable. David, after that drive, I think we've proved one thing, that there is so little in these cars as makes no never mind. Really, it is just, do you want a slightly softer handling car? Mm -hmm. Do you want a wagon? Mm -hmm. Or do you want a sedan and a slightly firmer, meaner car? That looks like it. Oh, but David, it's come time, sadly, to hit like. Or leave a comment. Or both. But above all, don't forget to subscribe.